All right, Shalom, Shalom, Yashallah, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to the Most High, Yahweh. I do so in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the elders of Yashallah. All praise to the Most High, Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Yahweh Kakadash, for blessing our elders with the spirit of truth, so that we may know. Shout out to the Akim and the Akwathim that's keeping the faith in the work. Y'all keep at it. It's your brother Abaya coming at you with more precepts. Today's topic, man, is extreme milk. Milk of milk. Right? <clears throat> is, today is not going to be a, a, a deep lesson at all. Right? But um, what I've come to realize is that a lot of people still have no idea of what an Israelite is, who are the Israelites in the Bible, and who are they today. You get so caught up in, um, you know, paying attention to prophecies and studying that sometimes you, you kind of lose track that not everybody is um, woke. It's still a number of people that have yet to wake up. Right, and however many uh, people that is, that number still, you know, is is um is relevant because if the number was fulfilled, if the number was, and when I say the number, I'm speaking of the one third and one hundred forty four thousand. If that number was fulfilled, then the prophecies of Jacob's trouble would be in full effect. I wouldn't even be able to make a video, right, because it would be on some survival of the fittest stuff right about now even though it looked like we about to go there anytime now All right so like i said today's lesson is milk so i'm gonna start off with um first peter two and two first peter chapter two and verse two this video is more so for um for babes, all right. Those of those of us who um you probably heard, you know, so that when they they know somebody that's in the truth and they can't quite get it, maybe the person that they know isn't able to explain thoroughly um what they believe. So here's my take on it. First Peter two and two says, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby right you have to have that milk right if you are just now understanding or just not trying to understand rather um the big to do about hebrew israelites you can't dive into revelation because it'll be too much for you right you can't dive into uh into daniel and uh you know what I mean? Second Ezra's. You can't dive into those scripts because first you have to understand the basics of it all. Who are the characters in the book? It's simple. All right? So, the next stop is Romans chapter 8 and verse 16. It says, the spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Verse 17, and of children, then heirs, heirs of power and joint heirs with Hamashiach, which is the Messiah. It says, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. Right. So basically, the minute that you say, you know what? I'm going to follow the truth, right? I'm going I'm to put all nonsense to the side and I'm going to handle my business. I'm going to seek the father because I want the kingdom. You can automatically just prepare yourself to be tried, man. Just go ahead, prepare yourself to be laughed at, ridiculed, prepare for your family to, to uh, leave, Right, just being real with you, you are not going to be seen the same. They're gonna look at you totally different because they don't understand. You have an understanding 
that the Most High didn't give to everybody. It's a special thing, right? Special. It's a special thing to connect with the spirit that went into writing the words in this book. That means that you're chosen. Well, that means that you, that means that you're called. Many are called, but few are chosen, right? Most are willing. You're chosen. Most are willing. I'm chosen, right? But like I said, the minute that you say you're gonna follow the truth, matter of fact, let's get that. Let's get that. It's all right. It's the book of Sirach, which is in the Apocrypha. The Apocrypha is a portion of the original 1611 King James Bible. You, it, it was basically made in three parts. Old Testament, Apocrypha, New Testament. The word Apocrypha means uh, basically hidden books or hidden knowledge. Right? So, Sirach, which is Ecclesiasticus, chapter 2 and verse 1. It says, My son... If thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. All right? So get ready for it because it's coming. Verse 2 says, Set thy heart aright and constantly endure and make not haste in time of trouble. All right? Constantly endure. Meaning it's not going to be a one thing a day walk. It's going to be a one thing a minute. One thing an hour. One thing a day, one thing or not one thing a day. You, you, you get what I'm saying, right? It's a culmination of events that you're gonna have to fight off. You're gonna have to fight off um, thoughts in your mind because you have to put your put your mindset in 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 this manner. We were raised wicked. Our parents did not know this truth, so we were literally bred wicked. Even the sweetest of us, right? The church going, I mean, they they all about, you know what I mean, pastor poke chop and all so forth and so on. Hey, at the end of the day, they are practicing wickedness. Because the church don't tell you not to celebrate birthdays. Right? Church don't say nothing about Christmas. In fact, the church endorses Christmas. Right? Church don't say nothing about Valentine's Day. Don't say nothing about Father's Day. Says zero things about Mother's Day. But all of those things are things that we should not be following. Because first and foremost, it ain't in the script. Right? As it pertains to us having to follow these days. Right? But at the end of the day, uh, the church don't know no better. Um, uh, the majority of them, are, I suppose. Right, but we were born wicked, so we have to learn to be righteous. That's why you have to come to the scripts as a babe, right? So we go back where I just left from, right? The book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 16 The spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Right. So the spirit should let your spirit know this is pertaining to you. Right. Let's see what the spirit is that's supposed to be letting our spirit inside of us know that this pertains to us. Go to John. Chapter six. And verse sixty three. It says, it is the spirit that quickeneth, meaning brings to life. Because literally right now, right, if you if you have not awakened to who you really are, you are in the congregation of the dead. You are the walking dead. That's where they get those films from. Right? A lot of your entertainment comes from the Bible. You wouldn't know it if you never studied it, though. But those of us that study scriptures, we can fully see scriptures all through um, different entertainment outlets. Right? We see it all through there, man. All right? But it says, it is the spirit that quickeneth, 
the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. All right. The spirit are the words that are written in the book. All right. Let's prove these things, though. Let's prove these things. Um, it's the book of. Let's see. Second Peter. One. And verse 20 says, know this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man. But holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. It says ghost, but it means spirit. Right. So the words that are in this book are not normal words. They're not written by normal men. These words in this book are written by spiritual men that were ordained to write down what they were living at that time. Right. What was going on during this time in history? Right. What were the stories that were that were told um, by their forefathers that were passed down from generation to generation as it pertains to where we came from? That's what this book came from. That's what this book is about. This is our history book. All right. So. The spirit itself bear witness with our spirit that we are children of the most high. Right? The words that, that, that are spoken in this book are spirit and they are life. Now, let's see what are the words that are written in this book that should let people know who they are and when i say people i'm speaking of the chosen people of the most high right i can get on esau i can get on ham i can get on other nations but right now we focusing on who is israel and where are they now right let's see what are these words that should speak to your spirit to let you know who you are of course you got to go to deuteronomy 28 this is one of the most powerful books and chapters in the Bible as it pertains to so-called blacks, so-called Latinos or so-called Hispanics and so-called Native Americans, all of Negro descent, so-called. Right. This is one of the most important books and chapters that you could read in the Bible. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28. Matter of fact, I'm going to start at 1. It says, And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Now, you can fact check that with history. The origins of, of um, society rested on so-called black men's shoulders because we ruled the world. These are facts. Whether they wanted to call us uh, what, uh, uh, Shasu, uh, so-called Egyptians, right? Because, you know, they want to lump everybody as a, as a, as a uh, e Egyptian if you came from Africa, but that's not so, right? Facts of the matter uh, remain. So-called black ruled the world at one point in time. Then came the white man and took it over. Right? So what happened for or to the so-called black man for them to lose power and for power to be given to the so-called white man? Go to Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15 it says, but it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. 
right? So the Most High's people were not doing what we were supposed to do, all right? And we lost power, all right? The same way today, you have so-called blacks that refuse to do right, that refuse to believe um, that they are more than just being a nigga, more than just the color in the crayon box, all right? They refuse to believe that. So they act like niggas and they act black. Get you a dictionary, look up the word black and tell me what it mean, man. It's everything negative. They did that for a reason. They labeled us as a nation as black for a reason. And they labeled themselves as a nation as white for a reason. Right? But that'll be a video for another time, most high will. Right now we're focusing on who is Israel and where are they now? Right? So we broke the most highest law, statutes, and commandments. We lost power. The so-called white man began to rule. Right? And here we are now. We're gonna fast forward this thing. In so-called 2020. Right? I'm gonna stay in Deuteronomy 28 because it's it's important. And I'm gonna I'm gonna read why it's important. Why is Deuteronomy 28 important? Go to Deuteronomy 28 and 45. Because remember now, we're speaking about the curses being the reason why we're in the state that we're in. Right? Once we broke our end of the contract, which is the covenant, all right, the stipulation to that is we would then be introduced to curses. All right, so this is Deuteronomy 28 and 45. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed, because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded thee. And they shall be, verse 46, and they shall be upon thee for a sign. And for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. So, a sign. What does a sign do? If I want to get gas at Sitco, or let's say Shell, I want to get gas at Shell. How do I know the gas station that I enter into is a Shell and not a Sitco? It's going to be the signs, all right? If I want to buy Nikes, I go to the mall, I want to buy some Nikes. What's going to keep me from buying uh, Adidas? Because I want Nikes. I can afford any kind of Nikes. I want Nikes. What's going to keep me from buying Adidas? It's going to be the sign on the shoe that lets me know those are Nikes. So these curses are to let us know who's who. Right? Because according to Revelation 2 9, in the end times, it's going to be a people that's going to claim to be Jews, but they're not. In actuality, they are the synagogue of Satan. Synagogue meaning chief house of Satan. Right? So the curses are to be on Israel for a sign and a wonder and upon thy seed forever. We like to call that generational curse. Right? We blame poverty on generational curses. We blame niggerdom, blame niggerdom on generational curses. The generational curses have a name. They are the curses of the Bible that are placed on Israel. 
Let's see what some of these curses are. We'll go back up to do the round of 28. And 16. Because uh, the majority of so-called blacks, the majority of so-called Hispanics, and the majority of so-called Native Americans have a certain name placed on our neighborhoods. Right? It's called the hood. Meaning it's trash. Literally. It's gonna be trash all in the middle of the street, all on the side of the street, broke down cars, oil spots, all that good stuff. And it's like that because we can't afford better. Right? If we could afford better, trust and believe we would not be living like this. The proof in that is when whenever we get the smallest amount of money, right? The smallest amount. 24 inches and above are going on the car. Candy paint jobs, right? We're going to have gold chains, gold grills, right? Flat screens all through the crib if we get money, right? So the reason why uh, we're at our down estate is because we can't. But it, it is, it's for a reason, right? So this is Deuteronomy 28 and 16. It says, Curse shalt thou be in the city, and cursed shalt thou be in the field, right? We stay in the hood because of the job situations, right? So that's a check for so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans because that's how we live in, right? Let's see. Let me, let me, let's go over some more of these. Uh... Some more of these curses. Man. It's Deuteronomy 28 and 23. It says, And the heaven that is over thy head shall be brass, and the earth that is under thee shall be iron. That's a hard time, man. That's like being between a rock and a hard place constantly. All right? They have a saying, the sky's the limit. No, nah, no, nah, not really for us. It's not. Right, and while we down here on this earth, we're gonna have to really grind, man, to stay broke. Right, those are the curses. Right, Deuteronomy 28 28. The Lord shall smite thee with madness and blindness and astonishment of heart. That nigga mindset is utter madness, man. I mean, utter madness. A nigga will sell hair on to his mama, man. Right? A nigga, a nigga will steal something from you, turn right around, and try to sell you the same thing that he just stole from you. If that's not madness, I don't know what is. Right? And blindness, man. Scripture says, blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear. Everybody ain't going to get this truth. Because they've been mentally decapitated, man. They gone. They too far gone to be brought back. Right? An astonishment of heart, man. That's a mental, that's a mental block, bro. Right? Once again, these are the curses. And it sounds, these are all checks for so-called blacks, so-called Hispanics, and so-called Native Americans, man. This fits us. Right? It says, verse 32, Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in thy hand. Now, of course, you can equate that to slavery because that happened all the time in slavery. But you can also equate that to today. Say um, the, the, the right officials find out that you are doing something that they deem uh, not right in your household. They can come get your kids and there is nothing you can do about it. They can put your kids in the system 
and ain't nothing you can do about it. Right? So now we still, we still in these curses and that fits us. Because it happens all the time. The foster kept, foster system is, 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 is flooded with us. Right? Let's see, Salah. Verse 37, Deuteronomy 28, 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations whither the Lord shall lead thee. Right? A proverb, byword, and an astonishment. The astonishment is people are wondering how are we still here? And why have we not completely snapped? Because literally everything was taken away from us. And we were given a false identity. We still, to this day, are being ruled over by the same people that brought us over here in chains. And we know this is fact. This is not a mystery that we speaking on. This is worldwide fact, man. And people are just righteously just sitting back like, I wonder when they're going to really just blow. Right? It says, a proverb. A proverb is a wise saying. Right? One of the wisest sayings that I've ever heard as it pertains to so-called black people is if you want to hide something from a nigga, put it in a book. Because we not going to read, man. We love to be entertained, but we hate to read. We love shiny and flashy things, but we hate knowledge. All right? It says, and a byword. A byword is somebody calling you something other than what you really are. I.e., nigga. Black, African American, African, right? Speak, wet back, Mexican, Puerto Rican, Jamaican, right? All of those are words that were given to us by our oppressors. What were you before you were an African American? Because we had several names before African American took the final pole. We were Negro. We were Afro-American. Right? We had names, bro. But for whatever reason, in 2000, so-called 2020, we take African American to be the absolute truth as though that's what they called us the minute that we got off the ships. No. We were called we will be we began to be called African Americans in the 80s. All right? By one of the most famous coons in our history, Jesse Jackson. Uh Mr. Black Bouye. Right? So, once again, who is Israel? Who are the Israelites and where are they today? Right? The curses are for a sign to let one know who they are. Right? I'm I'm not gonna go over all of these curses because if I if I, if I break down all of these curses, man, this video will probably be about two hours long, bro. I'm not gonna do that. Right? You should be getting it by now. Right? This is Deuteronomy 28 and 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness, meaning clothing, and in want of all things, meaning all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Now, we're still here. We're, we're clearly still here. But how were we destroyed? Mentally is how we were destroyed. 
before the Emancipation Proclamation, man, you had all kinds of riots and uprisings, slave uprisings, man. You had all kinds, man. Nat Turner was just the one that stood out because he was so successful. But you had several uprisings, bro. Right? So when we got emancipated, the uprisings were done. They had put so much fear in our heart. It's, like I said, especially after Nat Turner, they were killing slaves just for being slaves, just for being in the way. The uprisings had stopped, man. They emancipated us, handed us over from uh, Master Williams or Master Brown or Master Johnson and gave us to Master Government. All right? Do you not have a birth certificate and a Social Security card? They were not giving those out when we were in chains. All right? It says... Verse 49, the Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flieth, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. Right? As swift as the eagle flieth. Right? That's America's bird. That ain't just America's bird. That's America's bird. That's Spain bird. Right? And several other countries bird. That lets you know something. Read Psalm 83 to see what I'm talking about. Right? It says, A nation of fierce countenance, which shall not regard the person of the old, nor show favor to the young. Right? What were they doing during uh, slavery times to uh, our uh, ancestors who were pregnant? They were stringing them up, cutting their belly out, or cutting their belly open, pulling the baby out. Using the baby as alligator bait and allowing the, the mother to watch all of this as she bled to death. Right? Lest we forget. Right? Let's see. I'm going to go straight to the point, man. Straight to the main curse. The main curse that should let you know who are the Israelites today. Right? Deuteronomy 28 and 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Now, you can read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. You will never find a scripture that says after Moses came and got Israel out of Egypt, that they went back into Egypt as a nation with ships. Or at all. Right? Let's find out what that word Egypt is. Egypt means. Right? Because you have to read the Bible a certain way in order to get the understanding of it. Alright, read eight, uh, Isaiah 28, 9 through 10 to find that out. But Exodus 20 and 2 says. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. So, the land of Egypt is the house of bondage. Egypt equates to bondage. Another word for bondage, slavery. Let's go back to Deuteronomy 28 and 68. It says, And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt, which is slavery, again with ships. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, as it was written, over 2,000 years before the event happened. Thou shalt see it no more again. We have not collectively seen our homeland since 70 AD. Right? 70 AD is the last time we were in Jerusalem, 
Research that historical fact. 70 AD Jerusalem. Research what happened. All right. It says, and there shall be Shalak, and there ye shall be sold unto your enemies, not your partners, not your friends, not someone you should trust. Right? You have no choice but to live amongst them. But you have a choice as it pertains to who you give your trust to. Right? Scripture tells us to be wise as serpents, but harmless as doves, meaning play the game raw. Right? It says, And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men, which is slave men, and bond women, which is slave women. And no man shall buy you, meaning there will be no man to liberate you out of this captivity. Right? There will be no Martin Luther King. There will be no Malcolm X. There will be no Medgar Evers. Right? There will be none of that. You are going to be in this captivity until Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai come save you. And it's going to be in a spectacular fashion because the world has to know who the Most High is first and foremost and who his people are. Alright? So, these words are addressed to who? It's the book of Deuteronomy chapter 29 and verse 1. These are the words of the covenant which the Lord commanded Moses to make with the children of Israel in the land of Moab beside the covenant which he made with them in Horeb. Right? So, if you didn't know now you know so-called blacks so-called native americans and so-called hispanics are the true israelites man point blank period right so i'm gonna leave you with this one script man most high willing that was enough right but you can easily go study and find out for yourself all right, one more script, man, and most I will, and one, one, uh, most I will, and one more script, and that'll be that. Go to Romans chapter thirteen and verse eleven, and that, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than we believe. Shalom, Yasha Allah, Shalom. Yasha Allah is the Paleo Hebrew of Israel, princes of power or prince of power. Yasha is prince, Allah is power. Yasha Allah. Right? Shalom meaning peace. Right? So Shalom, Yasha Allah, Yahweh being the name of the Heavenly Father. Yah meaning he, Hawah exists. Bahashem meaning in the name. Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai. He who exists is salvation. All right? Bahashem in the name. Haraka Kadash. The spirit of holiness. All right, so Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem Harakakadash, Shalom.